All right, folks. So what we're going to do today is we are going to test this Lab 599TX500 Discovery. That's a mouthful. Um, I'm really impressed with this radio. And you see a lot of videos where folks have these and they're like, it's a fantastic radio. It's a great radio. And it is. And one of the things I wanted to do was test its output for um, spurious emissions or harmonics just to see how clean this radio is and then if it is emitting any of these signals or not, because that certainly would be a downer. So I want to talk about a little bit about how we're set up to do this test today. Uh, coming out of the antenna port, we just have a coaxial cable that comes around and goes into this. It is a 10 watt 40 dB attenuator. Uh, you can see on here it's good from DC to 3 gigahertz. Uh, we're not going to test anywhere near 3 gigahertz, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to test this at 10 watts. So we have this radio set for full power. Um, and when it comes in here, we are going to, it comes out of here, we're going to feed it into our tiny SA. In our tiny SA, we're going to put this in a harmonics mode, which would allow us to check for harmonics and uh, see how they are and see if they're within spec or not. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that. But first, I'm going to set up a different camera because I feel that we're probably going to be able to get a better look at this uh, instead of overhead with a better camera. So let me get that set up and we'll be right back. Okay, and so we are back. Don't panic yet. This is just the zoom of the radio. We're going to zoom in on the tiny SA so we can see that. But I wanted to talk a little bit and show down here you can see our power and uh, this can be adjusted. And we are going to be at 100%, which is going to be our 10 watts out. Uh, for this test, we're going to transmit on 7200 on the 40 meter band. We're going to look at 20 meter band and we're going to look at the 10 meter band. Why is it just those three? Because that's what we have time for. Um, and the other thing is, is here is that we are on CW. So when we key up, we're just going to emit a carrier and that carrier is going to be our tone that we're going to look for for harmonics. So, so let me go ahead and get the rest of this set up and we'll, we'll take it from there. Okay, so here we are set up so we can see the tiny SA. Now I'm looking through the camera, so this makes this a little bit difficult. What I want to do is I want to put this into harmonics mode. And I do that by clicking here, and then I get a menu. And what I'm going to do with this menu is I'm going to click measure. And then I pick harmonic, and when I do that, I'm presented with this keypad entry. And what I want to do is put the uh, frequency of the fundamental. In this case, our fundamental is going to be 7.2 megahertz. And so what's happening now is it is doing some averaging and is preparing the tiny SA. So what I'm going to do is key up. Remember, we're set for CW, so this is going to be carrier only. And so when I key up, that is what you see. Now, keep in mind the signal is attenuated 40 dB because the inline attenuator, but um, that's pretty dang on good. There's no harmonics there, no measurable harmonics, um, which is fantastic. And I was a little bit surprised because typically you do see something, and here we're seeing nothing. So let's go ahead and go up to 20 meters, and now I have to go back in and reset the fundamental frequency on the tiny SA. Okay, now the tiny SA should be ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to key up. And then there you can see a very crisp and clean signal uh, with no harmonics. So again, pretty impressive. And then the, the last thing is, is that we are going to go up to 10 meters. And we're going to do this at 28.3. So let me go ahead and set the tiny SA. Okay, the tiny SA is resetting itself. And we should be good to go. So there we are getting another uh, artifact. I'm not entirely sure if that is not something that's taking place in here or if that is something that is uh, a result of the Lab 599. Let's uh, take a quick look and see if we can zoom in on this at all. <clears throat> okay, so what we've done is, is that we've centered the tiny SA on our fundamental frequency of 23 point, I'm sorry, 28.3. So when I key up, we definitely are seeing another spike there. Um, and this one is negative 53 dB. So let's see how far down this one is.
So that is uh, 71. So that's about 18 dB lower than our fundamental. Um, and again, I don't know if that's a mixing artifact in here or if that's coming out of here. Um, tell you what, we're going to throw this on to the Siglent uh, spectrum analyzer and see if we see anything different there. Okay, and we're recording. You would not believe what a mess that we have here on the desk, but that's okay. Um, I think I just bumped something. Anyhow, here is the Siglent spectrum analyzer. We're going to take a quick look at this. I'm going to key it up and we're going to see a couple of different things. So when I key it up, we're seeing around the negative 50 something uh, DBM. And so that's where we were with the tiny SA. So that's right. Uh, we have a marker. Oh, I got my hand away. We got a marker here, marker number one. And up here, you can see on the frequency, it's 28.305. That was the closest place that I had a marker. And we don't see the other signal. Um, I do think that that might have been an issue with the tiny SA. I don't know for sure, so I don't want to condemn it. It could have been something with the discovery. I don't know for sure. I don't want to condemn it. What I do know is we're not seeing it here, and uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so in a rather exciting turn of events, uh, when I was editing the video that you were just watching, I noticed that my noise floor was around 70, negative 70 dB. And that was right where the sig second signal was uh, with the attenuation. So what I realized is I wasn't seeing it because the noise floor was too high. So what I did is I adjusted my resolution bandwidth. You can see up in the upper right-hand corner there. And what that did is, in effect is lower my noise floor down to below negative 80 dB. And sure enough, there's that second signal. So the... Um, Tiny SA is vindicated, so what it was seeing seems to be real. We've replicated that on two instruments at this point. Um, and it does appear that there is uh, some signal coming out of the Lab 599. Now, I'm not a scientist, and I am not a lawyer, and I'm not going to interpret the FCC rules on harmonics and spurious emissions. That's something you need to do for yourself. But to me, this is real. There's something there, um, and it probably warrants a little bit more investigation. All righty. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and leave them below, and I'll do my best to respond.